Jack K, and welcome to another Pokemon Go Fireside Chat editorial. I was going to do a live stream, but eh, technical difficulties say otherwise, so I think I'm just going to record something real quick here and then end it off. This would be a bit of a shorty anyways, because it's all about the Lake Guardians, and not even the event itself. I mostly just want to say... That's cool that Nanak, like, d decided to do their, the Lake Guardians in this particular fashion and decided to bring them, them back. And now that remote, which would normally just be, eh, because they didn't even bother to release the Shinies, but remote training's a thing, so a lot of people, including myself, got to get Lake Guardians outside of their region thanks to the power of internet tools like Discord. And the Pokemon various Pokemon Go communities. Well, I could I could swear I had more to talk about than that, but I'm kind of just blinking out. It's just those things are cool. I guess I could like go through what I got so far. I definitely went pretty crazy because on top of like doing remote raids for. The legendaries outside my region. I wanted to make sure I return a favor by doing remote trades. By doing raids and hosting remote trades for people who need ass help as well. So, just starting in the bottom here and going on top, I got two, three, four Mesprits. Two, four Uxies. And a ton of assholes. Like nine to be precise. And that's nine more than I need. Because I'm pretty sure I still held on to two. From the last time the Lake Guardians were around. Oh yeah. Actually it would probably be ten assholes. Because I did transfer one to Pokemon Home already. So yeah. Even more than what I need. So I'll probably be transferring some more soon. But I mean like to try and make the most of the, my raid pass money. I think I'm going to just like slowly be transferring on the Pokemon Home one at a time. Unless like we get a major, another double transfer candy event for, before then. But I'm not really too hurting for Aself candies because like the thing with Psychic types is like Aself is a good Psychic type but it's impossible. It's tough if you're a Psychic type Pokemon because you have to compete with Mewtwo and you don't compete with Mewtwo. You just get outclassed by Mewtwo whether it be Normal Mewtwo, Mewtwo with Psy Strike, and then bump that up with Shadow Mewtwo, and eventually with Megas in the mix now, we're going to get Mega Mewtwo X and Y, which are going to probably be the most powerful Pokemon in the entire game ever. There's a lot that's going to be coming around and not a lot of time to sort it all out, like I think the rating was a huge highlight of the Lake Guardian event. There's other things going on, like the release of Shiny Golding, and with that, Shiny all the way, I'm pretty sure like Snorlax, and maybe some others that I'm not surprised aren't out yet, like Mew and Diddle, are all that's left of Cantle Shinies, which is interesting trivia in and of itself. Spawns could have been a little bit better for Golding, to be perfectly honest, but I get the feeling they are trying to push you to use incense for this. Because I don't know, I just recall some wording from the event itself that kind of claimed that you would find Goldie more often if you use incense. I guess I wasn't as salty about it as some other people on the internet were because there was also plenty of other spawns that I was trying hunting for. Psyduck in particular stands out. Unfortunately, I didn't really find the shiny Psyduck at all. In fact, I... Don't think I got any shinies from this event whatsoever. You got those got shiny Cyndaquil ran randomly on a walk of all things. Put like Young know, Man got Mark Community Day and some trades. Yeah, I didn't get any shinies from this event in particular. By the way, while I have it open on screen, shout outs to the new sorting system that they have. Really super neat, just in the concept of if you search. Yami, without even like searching any tags, you get these recommendations pop up right away. Like, I don't know what normal... Oh, normal is in the normal type. Yeah. It's showing on my screen, like... 
a type of Pokemon, Pokedex area like Kanto, hatching, what legendary Pokemon you have, what Pokemon were traded, those that can Mega Evolve. And this is all just like pulling up the search bar and you just tap a button and you automatically get the search results. It's probably one of the better quality of life improvements that Niang has put out in a while. And that's actually has some stiff competition because maybe not as recently, but it does feel like whenever Niang releases a quality of life update, it really shows. In fact, I could like hit see more and really like, oh wow, it even keeps track of the latest things I actually searched. Like, I started to type out Espeon to show, look for my EV Day nickname Espeon, and that's showing up on there. It has like shiny and. Oh yeah, because I was looking shiny Charmander. So, it has shine... shiny and then all those Pokemon that start with CH. I mean, tangent aside, what else can I talk about? I mean, I'm going to ignore the elephant in the room that is the new Gen 6 Pokemon that are currently out because I'm trying to just focus on things in the past. And I'm going to just pause real quick and just try to see if I can search up the Lake Guardian event to make sure I'm not overlooking anything super important. Okay, I got the Pokemon Go Live post up here, and I don't blame myself for not really remembering too much. The, the Lake Guardians, Usby, Mesper, and Azelf, pretty much the main focus of the event, where like, Azelf appeared in the Americas and some regions close by to it. Uxi appeared in like, uh, how do I describe it, like the Middle Eastern Australia area. And Mesper was mostly a European thing. That's a very broad and inaccurate thing, but that's the best I can think of off the top of my head. But the gimmick was like, because remote raiding is a thing, you, if you have a friend that can go to one of these other raids, they could remote invite you to the raid and you could catch that legendary Pokemon that way. The other things were just like spawn related, like. Water Pokemon that appear in your lakes like Psyduck, Goldeen, Magikarp, Surskit, Starling, and Bidoof. I guess I could talk a little bit about Starling and Bidoof. Because at first it's like, what do they have to do with lakes? Well, one, Bidoof's a beaver, so I guess it also makes sense. But two, like Starling and Bidoof were Route 1 Pokemon in the Gen 4 games. And your hometown's actually right next to one of the lakes where the Lake Guardian hangs out. Mesprit in particular. So you're basically like neighbors with Mesprit as the protagonist of the Gen 1 games, or the Gen 4 games. So it would make sense that like Pokemon that pretty much lived right next door to Mesprit, including Starly and Bidoof, would also be hanging out there. Also Shellos, which I guess could be interesting because, I mean, if we were in a world where we could travel and trade directly with other people, it would be more interesting because Shellos has two different forms, one that appears on the Western Hemisphere and one that appears on the Eastern Hemisphere, and that remains the same, so there wasn't really anything too different from there. Then there was a couple other Pokemon, like ones relating to knowledge, emotion, and willpower, like Abra, Machop, and Routes. I guess it kind of makes more sense when I read them all side by side, like, I was thinking, like, what does Machop have anything to do with mental states of being? But I guess Machop probably could be like a willpower, related to willpower power. Abra's definitely in the knowledge comparison, and like, I think Ralph is literally called an emotion Pokemon or something, so uh, all those three make sense when I read them out loud. Also, Goldeen hatching from five kilometer eggs, like, if it wasn't for the fact that he just released a shiny, uh, that'd probably be the most underwhelming part of it all. Oh, really? Apparently, AR mapping task offering new rewards were part of that event in particular. I thought... They just made them better in general. Maybe they like had more Goldeen encounters or something. I wasn't paying too much attention. Like, I don't hate AR mapping, but like I haven't really had a good opportunity to walk, especially a walk without grinding. So I haven't done as much as I used to. And then there's Fiend Field Research. Yeah. 
so, like an overall and average event, but and the real draw was just the fact that you could get some of these other lake guardians, despite them normally being in a region that's far away from you, if you had the proper connections. Um, it has a bit of a downside of it all. Not everyone's really going to be closely connected to Discord groups, and it also kind of resulted in just like social media feeds kind of getting flooded and spammed with no people just begging <laughs> for raid invites to legend some legendary Pokemon that they want. Like I don't, I, I mean, I'm already setting myself up for punishment by doing this, but I sometimes like to read the replies in the Pokemon Go Twitter. I do it with the same mindset that I'll actually like get to see like-minded people comment about a game that I like. Knowing it's full well in the back of my mind it's just going to be people complaining about features they don't have in the game and stuff like that. I never learn. I, it's always been an issue with me and Twitter since day one. Always going to replies, looking for posts. I mean, the problem is, occasionally I find a real gold nugget in all that pile of turd. And that gold nugget keeps making me come back and pack back to Twitter replies. <laughs> but you know, I'm kind of scraping the bottom of the bucket for this topic when I'm talking about Twitter. So, like, overall, yeah. Eh, honestly, an average event. What I was going to say, and the reason I was ringing out the spawns, was there were some interesting scenes to uh, Shiny Hunt, like Psyduck, Goldeen, Abra, Machop, and Routes. And I guess Magikarp too, but I feel like everyone's got their field of that from Magikarp Community Day. Although, I guess you could say the same thing about Routes. I wouldn't mind getting a Shiny Psyduck, though. Before I end it off, I guess I could go a little bit more into some stories relating to hunting for these out-of-region legendary Pokemon. I don't know how much detail I want to go into it, but I, shout outs to all the discords out there of communities I follow. Specifically, zoe 2 Dots, Pokemon Go YouTuber, has her a public discord, and the majority of the raid invites I got were just from following, checking out that the, the raid channel for that particular discord. Probably, and that and GoCast Podcast probably had some of the most organized Pokemon Go raid coordination. I mean, I've all, I've been part of the GoCast Podcast Discord because I'm in their Patreon now for a while now. So, I was already well aware of just how organized they keep, the, they not only keep raids, but the pride in it too. Zoe Two Dots is also fairly organized, but in a completely different way. And I figure I draw attention to that one just because it's Zoe's Discord is public, while I'll admit GoCast is kind of tied behind Patreon. Honestly, I think it's well worth it, but just bring in ideas. I might have gotten one or two raids from Cricket's Discord as well. But it's mostly the main two I listed before. I think of all things, the Owl's Elf Raid Hour is probably the most fun. Because even though I already didn't need Owl's Elf, it was part of me trying to give back to the community by, like, trying to take along a couple people from other regions with me as I was going out raiding. And I ended up, like, taking a few of my fr friends, not necessarily out of the country, but who don't normally get too many opportunities to raid oh, as well. And by take them with me, I mean like take their usernames in the palm of my hand like for remote raiding and all that. I, I haven't raided with a group since the pandemic started and for good reasons as <laughs> with the whole American situation and I'm sure also other a few couple other countries probably can find re relatability in it as well. But it was a day after work, kind of like this one. It was already dark and a little bit <laughs> nerve wracking to try to drive around and find a place. I was going to like stop by a park, even though it was dark. I was wishy washy. I was going to like just go to town because it was quicker. It was closer, I should say. And 
more laden, but I forgot how bad my cell reception is in town, so I just, like, said screw it. I'm gonna, like, try to go drive over to the town. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. It was raining kind of hard, and then kind of for the dark kind of made it a little nerve-wracking to try to get there. I missed the park and ended up in the town next to the park, and I was like, ah, screw it, close enough. It's probably easier to, like, drive around. I don't know how much I actually would want to get out of my car if it's rain anyway, so it's probably easier just to drive around town. It ended up being a pretty good time. There was, like, a whole bunch of... I think I ended up doing, like, five to... Definitely did, like, between three to six as elf raids just in that night. Probably more like four or five, though. And I got to take people from Zoe's Discord along for the ride. And a couple of my friends hopped in and out of a couple of raids. That's, that's the thing, though, like... The, my favorite part about raiding is just raiding with, raiding with actual friends. I normally don't open myself to other people, but I figured since I was relying on those discords to get Mesprit and Uxi, I figured the least I could do is return a favor and invite a few people from those discords for my Azel freights. It's kind of nice because, like, as part of a Uxie raid I was in earlier, I learned that you could like do mini Discord groups with people on your friends list. You just like add people as friends, and you can set up like a little chat room and invite people in and out. And it worked out perfectly for this sort of thing because like instead of like jumping between five different DMs at once, I could all I needed to do was just chat in a single chat room, and everyone would get the message, and we could coordinate going in and out of the raid. And made it one of the most smooth yet big experiences in a while. Plus, I actually learned a trick of how to invite more than five people to a raid. The thing is, like, you start with inviting your first five, and once one person accepts the invite and you actually see them in the lobby, then you jump out, quickly jump back in, and you should get the option to invite five more people. The caveat that got me confused in the past and the reason I'm only just learning the trick now I would always jump out before people join the raid just so my the second wave of people got as much time as possible the issue with that though is that just cancels out the raid lobby altogether so unfortunately you do have to wait for that first person to actually show up in your lobby and with between just like the lag of them actually getting the invite Accepting the invite and being in, usually that means that like the second wave of people barely gets any time to join. But if they are just like waiting for that invite and jump in as soon as they get it, you can hypothetically get more than six people onto a single raid. Like one of the raids we did, I think one of the earlier ones had like seven or eight people, and that's just pretty hype to see that many people in a raid, even though I was the only person around. And I think it's just fun because we just had like, we didn't like socialize too much, but it just felt like an overall positive experience. All talking together, watching people like get each get their own A self. That part was pretty hype. Just seeing like one of the per people like miss their first A self, and I was assuring them they get on the next one. And sure enough, they got their first A self on the second raid that they did. And it's like. It was real neat because, like, on top of just all those people, one of my more casual friends who literally only does enough raids to get their first Pokedex entry and then doesn't do a single raid after that, I was able to get them their first Ace Elf, too. It always makes me real happy to when that person in particular gets their legendary Pokemon. So, again... By all accounts, this should have just been a very, 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 very average event. Spawns weren't really that spectacular. The raid bosses were technically Pokemon that we've seen in the past. But just that whole remote raiding aspect in the elements made it a lot more exciting for me personally. I kind of went a little too carried away. Cause, especially because, like, of course they roll out beyond level 40. After I spent more raid passes than I ever had before, and the very first thing I need to do to get to level 41 is do like 40 raid 
This is like 40 raids. I could double check that real quick. <laughs> but what's it with this game freaking giving me lit liddens? I'll have to catch them afterwards, but then just freaking pop up afterwards. Yeah, win 30 raids. And that happened two days ago, so like, hypothetically I could be up to three raids already, but life has just kind of been ugh, rough on me. Life's kind of just been this way where I can't... Where I just couldn't get out and actually do the raids. Like, I am... I'm gonna miss out on my spin bonus today. Because I haven't even been out at all today to do that. I was gonna go out before work. But, like, I got a little slow of a start. And, like, by the time I was ready to go, there's no snow on the car. And just didn't... I'm working from home now. So it didn't really feel worth taking the time to wipe up the car. To go tr drive to a park if I could even get to the park in time and maybe walk like five minutes. On the bright side, I ended up walking like half an hour on the treadmill instead. So by health concept, that is way better. It just I feel like I unfortunately missed out on Pokemon going today, which is why I was trying to do the live stream, cause like I was gonna go out for raid hour just to actually start working my way for level forty one. But I, I, when I get out of work now, it's just pitch black. And I don't, wasn't sure if I really felt... It was a long day at work too, so I wasn't sure if I really would feel like getting into the car just to drive to the town and try to coordinate with people just to do a couple Kiram raids, which I'm not even that excited for. Yeah, I'm just going to cross my fingers. The weekend's going to be coming up soon. Maybe on a Friday, it'll be more. I'll be more excited to go out. And if not, like I can get out Saturday morning slash early afternoon when there's still actually sunlight. Hopefully, my soul won't be so sad and tired that I can't even tolerate the cold for a second. I almost, <laughs> like I said, I almost went out today, but just there wasn't enough time before work. I just barely got over that sad, cold feeling just a little too late. But <laughs> look at me just rambling about things that have nothing to do. Sorry if there was a lot of padding in this, I'll admit. Talking about the Lake Garion seemed a little bit too short of a topic, but I did want to talk about it. And the other things that came out were like things I want to talk about too. So it's all good. Thank you all for tuning in for this casual, even if not recorded live edition of the Pokemon Go Fireside Chat. And hope to see you for some more in the future. Take care. <laughs>